everybody, Jen here at Stone Zoo with our African Spurred Tortoises, uh, having a little late lunch with them. Um, we're in here, we're gonna be feeding them um, some kale and some endive and some romaine lettuce because they seem pretty hungry right now. Um, now, as I mentioned, these guys are African Spurred Tortoises. Uh, they're also referred to as Socata tortoises and spur thigh tortoises. So if you've heard any of those names, uh, it is actually the same species of tortoise. Um, these guys are native to Africa. So they live in the Central African region, um, in like the South Sahara area. Um, they do live in a desert habitat, sort of grasslands, um, where it is very, very warm. They're actually the largest species of tortoise, of mainland tortoise, that lives in Africa. So it's gonna be the biggest kind that you're gonna find there. Um, and believe it or not, they're actually the third largest species of tortoise in the world. So the largest species of tortoise in the world that you're gonna find is the Galapagos tortoise. The second largest is the Aldabra. And then as I mentioned, these guys are the third largest. <laughs> Trying to get around, make sure that they all get a little bit of food here. Uh, they can sometimes get a little uh, testing the dominance with each other. So you will see them occasionally um, sort of try to ram into each other or go after each other. Uh, and that's just normal for these species. Again, it's just testing out who's gonna be the most dominant of the three. Um, all three of these are male tortoises. Uh, we acquired them from the Phoenix Herpetological Society. And not much is really known about their history before that. Um, it is sort of limited. They did uh, get donated to Phoenix from a family. Um, the owner that had them before that was housing them in a private area. There's about 26 of them total. Um, so all of those tortoises, again, went to that Phoenix Herpetological Society. Um, and then we ended up with a couple of them here at Stone Zoo. Um, so because their his history is sort of limited, we don't really know uh, their exact ages. Um, we do estimate just by looking at them and by counting the rings on their shell um, that they are between 20 and 30 years old, probably close to about 22, 23 years old. Uh, but these guys can actually live 80 to 100 years, believe it or not. So they can live a really, really long time. Now they do get that name, spurred tortoise or spur thigh tortoise. If you take a look at their legs, I think Brian will probably get you a pretty good shot right now. Um, you can see that their legs do have what look like spurs on them. So that is where that name comes from. Oop, got the tongs. <laughs> Now, again, I did mention that this species does live in Africa. Uh, and in Africa, it does get very, very, very hot there. So these tortoises are crepuscular, which means that they're gonna be more active at dawn and at dusk when it's a little bit cooler. Um, during the daytime, they're going to be down, hunkered down in these really deep burrows that they dig. Um, here at Stone Zoo, you might not see them in the afternoon because they do have some huts that we give them where they can escape from the hot summer sun um, and get a little bit of shade. But the burrows that they dig in the wild can actually be up to 10 feet deep, um, which is really, really pretty deep for a tortoise. Um, they'll dig these burrows and it almost creates its own little ecosystem. There they go, there's some of that dominance that I was talking about. Um, but these burrows create their own little ecosystem within it because once a tortoise leaves that burrow, other animals are going to inhabit it um, and they're gonna make a home out of that abandoned tortoise burrow. Um, so they are a keystone species in that way. Now he's just gonna go eat the plants now. I'm not feeding him fast enough apparently. <laughs> so they are considered a keystone species and that they do help to create these homes for other animals in the desert as well. Um, now, another thing that's really cool, again, living in the desert, um, there's sometimes not always a bunch of food and a bunch of water that they can find. Um, in the wild, they would be eating a lot of leaves and grasses and cacti. And they're also going to get a lot of their water from the plants that they're eating. 
Um, but when they do come across water, they can actually drink up to 15% of their body weight at once to sort of rehydrate themselves, which is really, really interesting. Um, I don't know if we've had any questions come through yet, or I can just keep talking about them. So Jen, so we have a couple questions. So we, we know that these are tortoises, but yes. maybe could you tell us a little bit about the difference between tortoises and turtles? Sure, so I don't know if everybody can hear the questions um, because I do have the microphone on today, so I am gonna repeat them. Um, so the question was if we could talk about the differences between tortoises and turtles. So I mentioned that these guys are tortoises. Now, a couple of the big differences that you're going to look at have to do with their shell, um, their shell shape, and then also their legs. So tortoises are going to be predominantly land animals. Um, they are built for the land. Again, they have those really thick sort of stumpy legs that are made for walking around on land. They're made for digging and burrowing. Um, their shells are going to be more of that dome shaped. Um, and they can't really tuck their bodies into their shells like some turtle species can. Um, they can sort of pull their head back and then tuck their legs in front of their head like armor to protect them. Uh, but they can't fully pull their body into their shell. Um, turtles, on the other hand, again, there are going to be some, not, this is going to be the case for all species. There are going to be some sort of outliers here. Um, but most turtle species are going to be aquatic. They're going to be made for the water. So they're going to have flippers or they're going to have webbed feet that's going to be able to help them to swim through the water. Um, they're also going to have more of a flat shell. So it's going to make them a little bit more streamlined uh, and a little bit easier to swim through the water. So those are a couple of the big differences that you can look for if you're trying to figure out is something a turtle or a tortoise. It's the shape of the, shape of the shell I'm sorry, and their legs. Sure. So the question was if these tortoises are endangered species. So these tortoises are actually classified as vulnerable. And the reason for that is mainly because of habitat loss and also the illegal pet trade. So people will collect these tortoises um, to be pets. I don't recommend it. They don't make very good pets. As you can see, they're quite large. All of our tortoises here are close to 100 pounds and they're not even fully grown yet. Um, male tortoises can get up to 200 pounds, females up to about 100, so they do grow quite large. Um, again, they also dig those burrows, so if you think about having them in your backyard, they're gonna be digging holes and burrows everywhere. So Jen, can you tell us, do these tortoises have names? They do actually have names. Um, so they actually have little numbers. I don't know if we can get a shot of any of the numbers on their shell. They are marked. Um, so number three here is Sebastian. Number two is Big Ed. And then number one, it looks like he actually went back inside into the shade for a little break. Oh, he's coming back out. Uh, that is Cuddyback over there. So at the zoo, as I mentioned, they're eating all of these greens. Um, they also get some carrots. There's some carrots in here that I can show you. And those pellets that you see are actually tortoise pellets. So they're high in nutritional value. Uh, there's just a lot of vitamins and nutrients in there. Um, and then you might have also seen some hay scattered around their exhibit. So they do also get some Timothy hay that they like to munch on throughout the day. And do these tortoises have any predators? So the question was, do these tortoises have any predators? Um, and again, looking at the size of them, they are quite large. Um, there's not too many things in the wild that would be able to eat them, to be able to get through that shell. Um, so they don't really have any natural predators other than humans. All right, so I think that's all of the questions that we have. Um, so if you have any other questions, uh, be sure to put those down in the comments and we will do our best to answer those questions for you later. Um, I also want to mention if you guys want to get a chance to come and see these tortoises up close yourself, uh, we are going to be starting up tortoise feed soon. Um, we don't have a set date yet, but you can keep your eye on our website and on our social media pages. 
on how you can book tickets to be able to come and see our tortoises up close and get a chance to feed them. All right, well, thank you everybody for tuning in today. Um, and again, be sure to check back on our page for more Zoo to You. Bye.